Is this thing on? All right, gentlemen, coming to main stage next, this is Bunny. Get up there. She's got a tornado of titties coming your way. Get those dollar bills ready. She's got an ass that shakes like Michael J. Fox. So get up there and throw, throw, throw them dollars. Dude, that is fucking iconic. <laughs> What's up, you sexy motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Dumb Blonde. The motherfucking doctor is in. So happy to be back. Dude, Doc Felix is back <laughs> in the house. I'm so excited to have you here. Thanks for asking me to come back. Dude, I, I want you here all the time. <laughs> like, you are literally one of the most requested guests. When people found out that you were coming on, my inbox was just flooded. They were That's so awesome. excited. So. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear the questions this time. <laughs> Dude, what have you been up to? So let me thank you. Last time you were here was probably around October, November of 2019 been a while it's been a whole yeah it's been a minute you have grown so much like <laughs> where do we begin um so you change locations you own a uh, service station the by service station by felix mm -hmm. that's right and it's still officially called providence obstetrics and gynecology i am not delivering babies anymore <laughs> um i am still doing gynecology um and we're, we just have a DBA for the spa side, but we're in one location. We found a beautiful location in Brentwood. Um, we moved from Smyrna to Nolansville. During the pandemic, we hunkered down in Lux Salon Suites, which was a really good fit for us at the time. Um, but it didn't take very long. As soon as, as soon as things started opening back up, we needed more space. And yeah. We needed our own. So now we have our own. Um, we're at 7909 Concord Hills drive you're literally right down the fucking street from me yeah yeah i'm so close excited. to starbucks i can just oh you're right there <laughs> yes oh right my there. god literally you're fucking five minutes from my house yeah dude yeah i can wake up and just go get shit yes, done yes come get shit done i'm excited <laughs> we have um two. i've been watching from afar i'm just like okay yeah. taking notes of everything oh you're my doing, gosh dude. we've had so much change too so you probably i'm sure if you kind of just watch our feed you're probably like all right here they go again but <laughs> it's been an upgrade every single time yeah you know we've got new staff we've got um new technology like it just it's nice to see the practice even though there's been a lot of change it's been growth yeah instead of it just being change because we're getting knocked around by pandemics and changes and things like that we've been able to rally and mm -hmm. grow and learn and still Blossom. service the community yeah it's the growth has been phenomenal to watch mm -hmm. so what are some things that you're doing now that you're <laughs> offering that you weren't offering last time you were here because she is a doctor she does look at hoot nannies she does all that stuff i do i do <laughs> <laughs> doesn't deliver babies though no. um now you guys have like branched off though and you're you like have a whole aesthetics type thing now too right so. actually the aesthetics part is probably growing faster than the gyn part and that that's always been a big shock for me because when you're in healthcare and you're dependent on insurance companies and all that stuff yeah. like you're struggling you're in the fight with your patients trying to get things covered and then like two years later they show up with like a wad of cash yeah they're like, <laughs> and they're what? like okay so <laughs> i know i've got this balance from my hysterectomy but i'm gonna need you to suck this fat out and make it tight it's so. cr it's crazy to me that more women care about their looks than their pussy <laughs> I, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, though, it's been a blessing because as I'm doing liposuction or as I'm working on faces, it never fails. Somebody will be like, uh, so you're a gynecologist, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I am. Well, since you're down there, you <laughs> yeah, want to go no, dumpster diving? <laughs> so what does it mean when? <laughs> That's awesome. So you're doing lipo now. Mm -hmm. I'm We're doing really... liposuction and still the skin tightening part. Mm -hmm. part. So whenever we say body tight it includes liposuction but then I started just doing liposuction just to sort of do touch-ups for people that have had you know prior tummy tucks before or other liposuction or they've had tightening procedures they don't need it um, we've also branched out and we do larger BMIs than most plastic surgeons mm -hmm. do um, so we do it in a staged procedure instead of you going and going to sleep and then waking up and you know you look like you've been to Miami or you look like you yeah <laughs> which is awesome uh, i've been to vegas <laughs> so, i want to go <laughs> but listen not to inter interrupt you go but to, um i feel like women i'm going through this right now and I, I don't think i've ever shared this like publicly i everybody knows i've had my body done and um i had a high def vaser lipo and i had fat transfer to my ass six years ago it has been a fucking battle to lose weight. I have been, I did the 12 week program. Like I told you, mm -hmm. I lost eight pounds and I'm nice. tightening up, you know, but let me tell you something. It has been fucking hard. And I think what girls don't realize is surgery is not a fucking, 
the it's not an answer like you it's you not to, the whole answer you it helps you look beautiful right away mm -hmm. but you have to maintain it mm -hmm. you really do it's not it's not the easy way out like the recovery is really hard you still have to be dedicated yeah like a lot of times people don't want to take care of themselves as much as mm -hmm. it's required yeah so even if it's a post-op you know you're taking care of yourself post-op from liposuction like i'm only going to do so much and i have larger women come in and they're like would well, just work on the belly i'm like all right i'm just going to work on your belly but then there's the sides and, and then the there's arms, the back and, and the, the arms and it's going to be an it's a never-ending thing so if you're they're not in it with me they're mm -hmm. not going to be happy like they have to be doing the work absolutely as well yeah, like it, it just works better that way couldn't, unless they're only worried about the belly but. yeah <laughs> i couldn't agree more but like dude losing fat around my ass since i've had fat transfer holy shit fat transfer actually gave me more dimples to fucking have to work with like it, my body loves fat Mm. You know, some people's bodies don't love fat. Mine was like, give me all the fat. <laughs> you, give, you kept all yours? Oh, I kept it all. <laughs> Bitch can't even lose it on a fucking... I'm on a cut right now, and I'm still fucking holding on to fat. It's crazy. <laughs> so you do lipo. Um, what else? What are some other things that you do? We've had... Um, Real, I've seen a, a, a pretty good uptick in the vaginal rejuvenation mm. and actually wives bringing their husbands in because we do PRP therapy. So we've been doing injections, you know, like in the penis to help uh, with sensation and regeneration. And Ooh, does that hurt? What's the pain level of it, that? It does. Like you got to have your mind right. But, but let me tell you something. You don't I, numb the dick? I numb it. Oh. <laughs> but I'm not yeah. numbing it any more than I numb them. <laughs> vagina <laughs> i feel like vaginas can take a beating Can't you know, know? Like you can and dicks it. are like you flick it and they're like i know oh. like oh my god the air rushed by my yeah nuts. yeah like, yeah bitch, the doing? air's too cold it's a bit brisk in here you know like that's <laughs> that's how i feel like vaginas man we can get punched in our cunt and be fine right? and fucking dudes like literally are just babies i have literally been in all the way up to my elbow in a vagina both me and the patient are shocked oh. like holy shit you see how far i <gasps> don't look down here anymore just don't oh look down here like god look is that when they're giving birth or was this for fun oh no not for fun okay because mm -hmm. you know some girls do that i know but the but the delivery thing has ruined that part like mm. i'm not doing that i'm me either <laughs> That's why I haven't had kids. Fuck I'm that. Not doing that. My pussy hole does not need to be bigger than <laughs> It doesn't my head. need to be that big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you want it that way. Let me just let me mm. just back up on that because yeah. I'm not judgmental <laughs> unless it comes to me. I will judge the shit out of myself. Oh, dude, I'm the same way. <laughs> Swear to God, same way. Okay, so I keep interrupting you, but what else there besides the dick um, injections? <laughs> Did you say dick, and I'm like, where? What? Where? Where's the dick? I get so excited. I know. I'm like, why is it here? You know, because I don't have. <laughs> A ton of experience with that <laughs> professionally. Oh, I do. Um, <laughs> um, we've started doing some hands-free remodeling. So um, we're working with Cryo and Contour oh, down no. the street. Dr. Poe, she comes down. She's a family practice physician. And she comes in once a week. And so she has a pr um, primary care clinic that she runs at the service station. And then um, we have a machine that we're trying to push out there it's it's a really good company sign sure i think tip Shore envy i think i actually went to an, uh, meet dr poe oh did before, you yeah to see nice. what she had to do and she pretty much told me i just need to eat right <laughs> well that's her folks yeah I, that's what that's what i like and so i try to pair pair up her strength she with, was right though yeah like if you put those things together mm -hmm. you know oh my gosh because the other thing is you know i'll be doing liposuction on somebody and they'll start asking me questions all right doc what do i do after this what do i need to do about my diet Get well to work bitch. okay you know what i've got <laughs> surgery in five minutes but dr poe right, right. <laughs> has got this down to a <laughs> yeah. science no she really does um we started doing uh, more hormone replacement therapy so we've been oh, doing dope. pellets um so you know, a lot of people are starting to experience, um, you know, dips in their in their sex drive or in um, just their interest in sex, energy wise, memory uh, loss, things like that, that all go along with um, memory you know, loss. Yes. I never knew that. Sleep quality, irritability. It doesn't have to just be like hot flashes and, right. you know, and mood swings. But when um, does a woman really enter into uh, what is it? Menopause? So yeah. asking for myself because I'm 41 right, right, right. and I'm horny as shit. <laughs> That's so so okay. So you're I, you're start, you're entering in your peak. And my right puss now. is fucking wetter than like throbbing. Dude. Like oh, it's a man. problem. I'm horny. Yes. Like it's bad. <laughs> like yeah. can we fuck after this, Doctor Felix? I'm fucking horny. No, ask Mimi. Everywhere we go, I'm like, mm, 
fucking it's disgusting <laughs> i'm like a fucking teenage boy mm-hmm. right now i know it's i think it's unfair that it happens for women later than it happens for men but if it happened at the same time like the population would be off the chain on oh the dude. You know and my I mean? husband is like opposite of me right not men are, horny men are different men yeah. are different they so they just... really are they they hit their their peak early and you know they they dip down <sighs> When we're yeah, well, when we're starting to peak. we're on an uneven keel right now. <laughs> Literally, I can only fuck myself so much. <laughs> no, I get sick of it too. I'm Dude. like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> yeah, like I need to just be held and banged really fucking hard, and, and then I'm fine. That's all I need. Maybe just once a month, give me a good old fucking passionate heave ho, yeah, and I'm I'd, fucking ready. I'd be alright. It's bad too. My head's starting to hurt. <laughs> okay, so when does when do women usually enter menopause? So there, I. I need to differentiate between menopause and perimenopause. Mm -hmm. So perimenopause, that tends to be uh, the time of most unrest. Like you're most uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. like, you know, your surges are high, your sex drive might be high during those perimenopausal years, um, emotional changes. But menopause itself, things sort of start to level out Mm -hmm. and you enter menopause after you've had 12 full months without a period. Oh, I can't wait. Right? <laughs> I want a fucking hysterectomy so bad. Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I'm like, I already talked to my my other doctor about it, and she's like, yep. "Girl, if you want it, I'll give it to you." Because I have literally ruthless periods. I have to fucking plan my entire yeah. life around my periods, and yeah, I cramp yeah. for about ten days. Like, so, have you so tra- have? Did she talk to you about an endometrial ablation? No. Okay. I've never been diagnosed with endometriosis, but I think it's quite possible. So an endometrial ablation is a procedure you can have, and it gives you all the benefit of a hysterectomy without this, without the invasiveness of mm. a hysterectomy. So um, it doesn't affect your hormone levels at all, but it just destroys the functional lining of the uterus, so the inside of the uterus. So you're left with all your parts. It's an outpatient procedure. Some people do it in their office. I'm one of them. Yeah. Um, so you can do an endometrial ablation, and then you keep all your hormone levels natural you know right. just whatever your body is dictating or whatever your genetics dictate do you still have a period on it <clears throat> nope oh. and so without that period, can i come in on monday <laughs> <laughs> so without that period there tends to be no cramping right and it and it tends to make the quality of life a lot easier. i'm not gonna grow a mustache afterwards am i no nope, because there's no hormonal changes okay so the so if you had a hysterectomy if you left the ovaries behind then you get the same benefit right mm. um, but it's just a bit different you know recovery and invasiveness but a robotic hysterectomy is is an outpatient procedure as well so you could always go in and just have the uh, have the uterus removed mm-hmm. leave your ovaries so that you can still have the hormone that you need for your sleep quality. I'm just going to start coming to you and just letting you fucking do everything. Cause nobody fucking tells me all the good shit. Like you do. You I, just, you I keep really, it real. And that's what I love about you. I like feel like 100. that's why I have the patient following that I have. And, and the wait time is because we sit and we talk and yeah. you know, I need to know these things and they hit me up on Facebook and I try Aww. to, I try to reply. You're very accessible for a doctor. And most <laughs> doctors are not accessible. I know. Isn't and that a problem? It's a problem. So what else, um, you know, do, can we tell them about the service station? Like if somebody wanted to come to you and just fucking spend a day there, what could they do? So, um, cause I'm coming, we have <laughs> asking for myself. Um, we have, I've hired two amazing estheticians. There's Marie and there's Karen. Um, we are, they're both PCA skin certified. So, um, they have been together coming up with their with protocols for things. So it depends on your goal. So mm-hmm. it's one of those places you can walk in and you say, you know what, I, I feel like my skin's not, you know, not shiny enough. It's really dull. Or you just sort of walk in and, and just talk to them and they can, um, or me, and we can tell you, you know, recommend some procedures or services. It doesn't have to be a procedure. Um, we carry PCA skin line. It's a medical grade skin care skincare line so if you don't want to have a lot of procedures then you can get the skincare line so that you can just do it yourself at home right um so let's see pellets hormones, you're doing the neck tight stuff neck tight that's on the body tight spectrum so uh, i know you're upset about <laughs> she's gonna do a consultation so for everybody who wants to know i'm getting i'm fucking almost 42 years old i'm getting shit done and i'm gonna bring you guys along with me because one of the things i always do is keep it real with you guys so you guys can see what's going on so um doc is going to do some sort of treatment for me um we don't know which one yet she's gonna do a consult while we're on the podcast today of my neck because yeah, when, <laughs> when we do this, things change. It didn't used to do that, though. When I was 23, I, I could go like this and not have anything. And now, like, I laugh and it bullfrogs out, and it just fucking, I hate it. Okay. 
<laughs> she's like she's gonna make me do something so uh you know what i was thinking do you think um so you don't think i need neck tight uh, uh, so with neck tight it's just like body tight we're going to be depositing radio frequency energy underneath the skin mm -hmm. so there's going to be incisions made they're small one under the chin there's a few behind the ear and then we tighten up all the skin oh, here, all right? And suction, and suction out the fat. <laughs> oh. So if you can pinch and there's a fair amount of fat and there's not on you, there's skin, <laughs> like, what there's am I skin, doing? but there's not, there's not like a fat pad, right? So if you just have loose skin, then you can tighten it with external radio frequency energy like Fractura um, or Tempture Envy and that, um, that's pretty intense. That takes a, a couple sessions. Um, it's intense, as in what do you mean? As in that shit works. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm fucking coming and in. And then you don't have scars from that. So for you in particular, you know, if I just if I just saw you like that and you weren't moving, then I would say sure, neck tight because that's going to give the most bang for the for the buck. Right. But once you start touching it, if it's not solid fat under there, then you don't want to hollow it out because if you take out a thin layer of fat. Then you've got old saggy skin. And oh, you don't no. want that either. We all know. Uh -uh. I'll fucking duct tape my neck. You see what I'm talking about? God. Then you would not be happy with mm -mm. me, right? No. <laughs> so I we mean, tighten. we'll just have to cut it out. I'll just be like, look, dog, if, I can, if it's cut, hanging, we'll cut snip my neck. it. Cut my neck. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Listen, I am crazy. I will fucking duct tape, fucking <laughs> stuff, whatever, taxidermy my ass, whatever I got to do to just preserve myself. Yeah, I've done that to my breasts. <laughs> they look really nice. Well, thank you. Well, I'm so excited to have you back, and so were people on the podcast they have been waiting to get some questions answered and are you right. feeling up to answering a few questions i am i'm ready all right cool let me put the bifocals on because <laughs> i'm blind <laughs> as shit and let's see what <clears throat> we got going on here hold on one second <clears throat> what can i do to ease my symptoms of pmdd it's terrible okay so uh, PMDD, first of all, that is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. So that is really, really intense premenstrual syndrome. I had it. So there are a couple ways you can handle it. You can handle it, you know, just with pharmaceutical grade medication. There's something called Seraphim. Um, you can take that two weeks out of the month or you can do a mini dose like a I'm going to use the word micro dose I love it's not I just had to say that <laughs> but you, or you can take a, a lesser dose at a half dose right. every day of the month because for some people like me it would be hard for me to think two weeks before my period yeah. is going to start and think oh I should take that pill right now right um but it's it's a subtherapeutic dose of Prozac so if you Google it and then you see that it's Prozac, there's going to be a lot of negativity around it because Prozac had a lot of negative uh, connotation associated with it back in the 70s and 80s mm -hmm. in the early 90s. I remember when I was younger, if you were on Prozac, you were considered crazy. But Aww. Prozac is an amazing, it's an amazing drug. It's just one of those old tried and true medications. It's not going to kill your sex drive, which is a huge consideration when you start talking about taking medications that are going to alter, um, you know, your brain chemistry. Yeah. Um, and especially at my age, you know, I'm, I don't need anything <laughs> getting in the way of my sex drive She's at like, all. I like my hoot nanny <laughs> wet and dripping. I would love for that to happen. <laughs> um, so it's one of those medications that you can dose uh, really lightly to sort of help keep the emotional dips mm -hmm. from being as low. But because it's such a small dose, you don't have to worry about it flattening you out. And that's right. the other, that's the flip side of an antidepressant is if it's going to keep you from getting very, you know, emotionally low, then it's, and it, it also has potential to keep you from experiencing those emotional highs that we love. So, right. Yeah. So a low dose, uh, something like Seraphim or just a really small dose of generic Prozac, if you don't have really great insurance and right. you can help, help with that. There's also um, a lot of data around delta delta eight delta nine cbd mm -hmm. so there's all sorts of <laughs> and that's baby shit she loves it <laughs> there are all sorts of um other like you know homeopathic remedies that she can that's what that i did use. so i i'm self-diagnosed because i know everything but i literally <laughs> i i know for a fact i had uh pmdd and that's honestly what kind of sent me on this journey that i've been on the spiritual journey that has led me to microdosing but 
I got on a really good vitamin regimen and I'm telling you, it changed my fucking life. Like it yeah. was, I mean, I went from the L methylfolate to fucking, you know, now I take uh, standard process vitamins and I microdose twice now and I've noticed a huge fucking difference in my whole demeanor. I mean, you can even ask Mimi. Mimi's been microdosing yeah. too. Um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, whatever works for somebody you know some people the vitamins don't work and they need the, know, right? a, a little extra kick which is fine and that's you know if that's what people need to do do whatever it takes to make you feel better but don't sit and suffer yeah yeah and especially out of fear and so you know since since people have access to me here you know we do telehealth appointments and things like that so if there are people that are not local that want to have you know time oh, cool. to talk then they can absolutely schedule a telehealth appointment. We can kind of work our way through it. Aww. I'd offer them um, Thursday evenings from six to seven, and then sometimes on Tuesdays. But I'm usually my face-to-face patients yeah. on, on Tuesdays. So. You're a busy woman, but I love how you operate. If I was a doctor, I'd, I'd want to be just like you. <laughs> Thanks. Is it normal to get pimples on the lady downstairs? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so that whole lady downstairs thing, I'm going to call it vulva or you know, external Mm -hmm. vagina, the labia, the lips, all, whatever terminology you're using, that whole area down there's a modified sweat gland. Um, There's going to be sebum production. Sebum can cause acne. It's really, you know, really thick. Um, It's hormonally, you know, affected. So it depends on, you know, where you are in your cycle. Um, Then, yeah, you can, your hormones can surge and you can get acne and break out down there. If you are shaving, um, or waxing and you have curly hair, then it might be ingrown hairs. Mm-hmm. So that would, you know, each hair is associated with the sebum gland. I think uh, laser hair removal is really helpful for people that get a lot um, <clears throat> of acne or outbreaks down there. And the other thing is it tends to hyperpigment a lot. And so that will affect us in, you know, in some of these outfits that we like to wear, or baby yeah. suits and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, it, it sucks to have, you know, if you don't want a bush, it sucks to have one, <laughs> right. but it sucks worse to like have shaved all the way out to here and everybody can tell because yeah. you're broken out, and you're, you know, oh, hyperpigmented the... and things like that. So. If I ever, I little trick that I've always done, like if I break out down there, um, like from shaving or I, I wax all the time. Um, and lately the waxing has actually been making it worse down there. I put like a little bit of silic acid, not on my lips, <laughs> but anything like on mm-hmm. the top right there, mm-hmm. like I'll put silic acid and it gets rid of it. Yeah, I, I agree. There are little tricks for that. yeah so i mean you can always do little tricks too but mm. um that was a good question my man comes so fast no matter how many times we have sex a week help that is a different kind of doctor <laughs> <laughs> he needs to come get his dick shot up by you though right <laughs> i think it's probably too sensitive now i've heard of i don't your, think there's urologist. a problem with coming too fast like let's get it up and fuck and get it over with oh god there's a such thing as coming oh too no fast. is there really <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> I mean, like, once I'm nut, I'm ready to roll over and fucking, who are you? You yeah, know, well, like, if you did, but <laughs> yeah. if she didn't, yeah, because true. He, and he's done, true, st- still singing, slinging limp meat. Oh, like, that hurts. fucking limp biscuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know what happens after they they do that but um there are medications that, that he can take to to prolong it i've also um you know, but does it make it too long i hate dudes that want to fuck for like two hours that's, yeah that's that's the other side that's like the flip side of that like are you fucking yourself like what is <laughs> happening here are you just trying to show off like, like what's really stop yeah like enough bro <laughs> like we get the point okay i'm not a fuck i don't need my pussy jackhammered if you have to grab the lube more than twice oh that's long. the worst yeah no dude i hate that and it's always the weird porn dudes who fucking take forever to come you know what i'm talking about right fucking just nasty shit so there's medication that he can take to prolong right, it. Right. Um, and then, I don't know, I mean, you could maybe try a cock ring or something like that just mm-hmm. to kind of yeah. maintain the, the blood flow. I don't know what his refractory period is. So if he can get it up pretty quickly afterwards, then, you know, maybe he just needs to, to kind of, you know, go down on you or do other th- like work until yeah. he's ready again until you're done. Yeah, for sure. Or maybe yeah. just like make sure you orgasm before he puts it in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's just turned on, hella turned on by her. It sounds like it's a... She said, she said, no, many, how, no matter how many times a week we do it. So yeah. it sounds to me like they got a pretty active sex life. They're doing it a lot and mm-hmm. she's left hanging. Oh, that's a problem. Poor baby. Why is my vagina and asshole getting darker as I get older? <laughs> okay. So it could, we talked about that hyperpigmentation thing. It could just be straight up hormonal. 
Um, if you have any sort of insulin resistance or diabetes, that often will cause pigment changes in your skin. Wow, I never knew that. Especially down there and on the back of the neck and mm. in the axilla. So under back the arms, of the neck? Back of the neck. God, like we don't got <clears throat> enough fucking shit to worry about. Yeah. Diabetes. God, new fucking fear unlocked. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to have you check in the back of my neck now all the time. I would have already seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that sometimes. I've been like, so when's the last time you had your A1C check? Things oh. like that because of the, the coloration on the neck. Um, but so hormonal, it could be that uh, you've been, you know, doing things that are sort of inflammatory down there so too much too much shaving waxing depends on what how your skin is responding to it just over time those things those things add up yeah um, I have had a couple people ask me about skin um, bleaching and I haven't found like a, a safe and accepted mm -hmm. protocol yet but it's it's a thing no, I'm waiting I can't wait till you start doing that because <laughs> I will definitely get it done I, I use at home bleachers and stuff mm -hmm. like that and they don't really work that good um, you know so okay. i mean you would have to get something like professionally done i think to lighten it there's nothing i could recommend for it and i've tried everything. so hydroquinone was something that we were able to use and mm. it's something topical but um the u.s has outlawed it so we're not allowed to sell it anymore oh wow yeah so you I have feel to like go to they other always countries. take away the good shit they do, yeah. You gotta, it's like you gotta they, die from something. Might as well be from a bleached asshole, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm pissed <laughs> off. Why can't we have pretty buttholes and pussies I know, and shit? Right? It's gotta be cancer. <laughs> <laughs> what causes men not to be able to get their penis hard? Oh, there's so many, so many things. Mm -hmm. But again, that's not my area. I am not a urologist. Yeah. So there are a lot of <clears throat> wiener questions. I know, right? So sometimes uh, it's it's a mental block it's an emotional block it might be that um they're not open to the kind of experience you want to have sometimes um there's a fill problem meaning that the the corpus cavernosum the two columns on the side of the penis so the shaft of the penis can't fill properly sometimes they can fill but they won't hold the blood so it could be a valvular problem mm. sometimes it's a stage fright issue yeah nerves uh -huh. i get so that all the time that's had, happened to me i had a couple mm -hmm. i had a couple like that and i went You're to like, go just fuck me bro Stop went to go see pussy. the urologist well i used to see girls for a really long time and so yeah. my first dude i was with after yeah he just couldn't and i was like i I got took it personally. You're like, like, oh no. my god! What? Yeah, that, like, well, it's a blow. It's an ego blow. <laughs> so I went to go see my urologist friend, and he was like, "Sharice, give him this pill." <laughs> was <Twice>. it a Viagra? <laughs> <laughs> like he only he was fucking times. hanging a, a wet towel off his dick by the time you got done with him. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> oh, I it love. Was a good time. I remember those days. <laughs> I used to make my ex take Viagra just for fun. <laughs> Have you ever overdosed somebody on Viagra and felt really bad? No. I did that one time. Oh no! What happened? Yeah. Uh, it causes vasodilation, right? So if they overdose, then they'll flush. Like, they're, they'll oh, turn really red shit. and start sweating and stuff. And yeah. And I was just like, dude, sit down. Oh. <laughs> and then how long does Drink it take water. to wear off? I don't know. I left him. I, oh. him. I, had I love her. to get back She's to She's a cold-hearted woman just sure like me. I made sure he had what he needed. You're a woman after my own heart. <laughs> I just had to get to work. <laughs> I have a hernia, and every time I come, it pops out and ruins the moment. We'll have it fixed. Oh, Or God. tape it down. Let's you can tape wear it down. <clears throat> yeah, she can. Uh, depends how big it is, but I'm assuming it's like an abdominal hernia or an um, umbilical hernia. Yeah, so you get can, into details. Yeah, you can push it in, tape it down. You can wear a waist trainer and kind of incorporate it into an outfit so that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's my son. Chachi said no. <laughs> he no was like, waist oh. trainer. Mm -mm, <laughs> <doing that." laughs> um. Is it because she's pushing out too hard? It's just because everything the contracts. Muscles are, and, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good orgasm if it's going to pop your hernia. Golly. Good Got job. it. I wish I could come like that. I Fuck. know, right? Be like, never mind the, the alien jumping out of my belly. <laughs> just yeah. keep going. I wouldn't care. If I was a dude, I'd be like, come. At least you know, know. she's coming. Right? You're not faking it. Yeah, she's one. definitely not faking it. <laughs> Why do I always have discharge on my panties? There's no smell. It's just really annoying. It's supposed to be there. When it dries up, and it will, you will be sad. But there are a couple glands um, in the vagina. There are cysts on the cervix that help make mucus. And then there are um, there are glands, Bartholin glands, at the opening of the vagina that also make mucus. And that's to help keep things um, moisturized. I hate yeah. to use the word moisture. <laughs> Moist. <laughs> but it's, it's... I like you it know, moist. Wetness is a thing. And if you, if you don't have um, constant lubrication down there, then... 
those cells can change into more um, squamous cells, something that would be like on the outside of your body, mm. things that, that are highly keratinized. Yeah. And so that doesn't feel the same thing. So you feel the same way. So you, you want that. Keep the discharge, especially if there's no yeah. odor. It's going to change every week of your cycle. So it's going to change from clear to opaque uh, to really thick. It I just think there's something wrong up. with me. I can't like even if I wear a, like a skirt with no panties, my puss is so wet all the time. And it's not like discharge just <laughs> no, dripping out of me. No, we talked about that. You said yeah, that. It's no, it's still age. the same way. Love, enjoy that. It's been like this forever, <laughs> though. Like, when does it stop? Uh, I just turned 50 and it stops. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I got eight more years. <laughs> Shit. It stops. Oh, it's all right. When did it stop for you? I feel like a year or two ago. Okay. It's so like 48, 49. Yeah. Yeah. And my mom's no help. I asked my mom when she went through menopause and she said 25. I was like, get the fuck no. out of here, lady. <laughs> Maybe she started feeling changes and things like that. As she is too doped up to feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> list all the things you found in a vagina that shouldn't have been in there <laughs> oh, okay i remember that one story with yeah the anal beads that that's that's one of the that's one of the traumatic things um uh i, I love to find uh dick hairs in there i oh. love it when they come in <laughs> and, I, and i get to pull one out and i say he couldn't wait, right? Ah, <laughs> That's one of my favorite you things. You got caught. Um, there are... God, how, first of all, how long are their pubes? Yeah. Yeah, you know how guys are. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but they're visible. They're absolutely visible. Yeah. Um, one time, there was a whole baby foot in a vagina, so I put the speculum in, and yeah, there was... A, yep, the, a foot was, at, was in the vagina through the cervix, so she said she... she felt something she was pregnant stuck the speculum in opened it up and was looking and didn't recognize you know the foot and then the toes like did this little wiggle thing and i just oh my god jerked the speculum out <laughs> and said fuck and then i looked up at her and i was like i'm sorry <laughs> so did his foot age faster than him because it was hanging out of her the cervix was incompetent and she had a preterm delivery oh shit was the baby okay yeah yeah, yeah. oh good yeah Thank God. Absolutely. absolutely he he was fucking he came out in the world fucking kicking and screaming literally yeah. she actually found me on labor and delivery like six to eight weeks later and she was like hey i don't know if you remember me and i, I didn't because i was looking at her face and she was like i was the one you know you put the speculum in and said and said oh fuck and i was like oh how's your baby <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. I'm going to the queue to see him. So oh, that was one of those things. Oh my gosh. Um, sometimes, like there are these things called fistulas, so your body can create tracks mm -hmm. from one part of your body to the other. So I've found actual shit in a vagina before. Oh my god. It's unfortunate. That is an unfortunate thing. I didn't even know that could happen. Oh, yeah, what? it's crazy. I am fucking over yeah. this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a if you have a really traumatic vaginal delivery and you don't have a doctor that takes the time to really put those layers back together or if you've had surgery or if you've had a weird infection then your body can can take those areas of inflammation or or low pressure and create channels from one canal to another and so there's been times like I've you know people come in and they say like you know my discharge smells horrible and, and, yeah. and it's actual shit in there oh or urine would it that be can brown happen your... it would be brown discharge it's all like straight up doo-doo god straight fuck up. oh shit yep. puss yeah <laughs> um <laughs> that's a shame <laughs> yeah that's i'm i you know if if i don't make fun of it and laugh at it i'm gonna fucking be freaked out so if it ever happens to me just call me shit puss mm -hmm. the anal beads one was was the most involved one that one and then the lotion cap that yeah, one, yeah, that yeah, yeah. One, that you told that last time you yes. guys weren't. If you guys want to hear those stories, you guys got to go back. Just go back to yeah, it. And they listen were, to those. Lotion. They were fucking awesome. What? Half a lotion? I don't remember that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like one of those gold bond uh, squeeze lotion things. And you have to flip the cap up. And somebody was masturbating with that. And the gold cap came off, flipped around, and she couldn't pull it out because it, it was closed. So <sighs> when you try to grab it, and I don't even know how you would get, you'd have to like, but she. But the problem was that she lied to me about what it was. She said it was a toy <laughs> that had broken. So here I am, ready to sue, you know, a company with her, <laughs> in there trying to pull it out. And uh, there was a lot of suction that had built up behind it. So, oh. so pulling it out was legitimately like two hands and a foot, like with me trying to oh. pull this thing out. Did it pop? 
Did it make a pop sound? And yes. when it came out, it said, <laughs> then <laughs> pop. <laughs> And I was hoping it was lotion, but it was like a week's worth of built up uh, vagina really? <laughs> oh, fuck. in my hair, in my face. <sighs> Just one of those like, oh, God, that's so gross. she's a better woman than me. There's no way. And first of all, I've never looked at a lotion bottle and been like, <laughs> I've never, you're going to get it. I've never <laughs> looked at like, a gold bond lotion bottle the same again. Yeah, oh, like dude. every time I see it, I'm like, I could never lower. Like, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. and I'm horny as shit. Yeah, I look at everything <laughs> as a fucking an orifice to mm-hmm. go inside my hole. And I, I've never been turned on by a fucking bottle like that. That's crazy. And then I've found all kinds of, you know, tampons, condoms, things <sighs> like that. Yeah. I'm, I had somebody that was pregnant one time. Um, she came in crying, bleeding. You know, we thought the mm. worst. But come to find out her boyfriend had a piercing and he had like ripped her vagina straight up the inside. Um, oof. I was Uh-oh. pregnant with cash, <laughs> and my husband ripped his dick inside of me and yeah. bled all inside of me while I was pregnant. You got a Whoa. microphone, Mimi, so you could tell the story? What was in your vagina that made him tear? Is this plugged in? I don't know. Hold on, we'll plug it in real quick. <laughs> you got to hear this story. It was fucking insane. There you go. Check, check. Check, check. Check. Yep. Uh, so we went on vacation in Florida, and oh, uh, I was <laughs> pregnant, and we were having sex. And all of a sudden, a week before, wait, pause, a week before I was on the podcast with Bunny and she told a story about ripping her d- a ex. dude's dick. Yeah, he was uncircumcised. Okay, let me, let me. Yes. Okay, so we were having sex. I told you he was uncircumcised, pounding it from the back really hard, fucking slipped out, hit the wrong, hit the bone in between. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it just split his dick in half, fucking blood everywhere. Like the skin? Oh, just, I circumcised him that day. Shut yeah, up. it fucking Good for just, you. I know, I made him a man. Didn't you know? <laughs> Betty never forget you. Oh, no, he's still in my DMs. (laughs) So a week later, I circumcised my husband. You too. Was he uncircumcised? Yes. And he, I don't know if we just caught the wrong traction, (gasps) but he just looked at me and said, oh, fuck, and then pulled out a little bit. And I thought he started peeing on me. And then he goes, he goes, it happened. I didn't know what it happened meant. So I was about to come up and just like sock him for peeing on me. Cause <laughs> don't and Cause, like, I, I'm don't. not that kind of girl. <laughs> don't give right me now, a golden shower pregnant. right now. <laughs> yeah. And he just is stark white. And I looked down. I thought something had happened to me and the baby. Oh my God. And there was blood all over this hotel room. Mm. And I'm talking, he panicked. So he jumped off of me walls, floor, the bed oh my god the, and then he ran to the bathroom so it was like a trail like it was it was like that. <laughs> oh god and he he almost he, you know he bled a lot and so we had to rush him to the hospital which was luckily only a block away shit and there was nothing we could do other than bandage him like i literally spent my entire vacation changing dick bandages Oof. And, and she didn't get any dick for like a month the, I, oh, right no. I'm yeah surprised, it, it's I'm surprised even he rallied after a month nuts <laughs> that it, and it completely split the whole bottom the whole skin that holds on what's his dick look like now the frenulum huh? just it, it, perfect it is, yeah you can't even tell it, oh. it literally just pretty much circumcised, circumcised without him. taking the top part off yeah it cut that skin off completely <laughs> that's nice. crazy right that's a vagina yeah oh yeah. fucking gripper me. <laughs> gorilla grip puss over there <laughs> <laughs> mimi's got that gorilla grip <laughs> I'm still trying to get her and Jason to send me the Snapchat fucking shit that they send each other. I'm always in the dark about all this horny shit. We're together, in it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> um, one last question. I had a partial hysterectomy at 30 and had the rest removed at 32. I'm 37 now and have libido issues. I don't oh, have much of a sex drive and I want to know how to help with that. So by partial hysterectomy, um, she means that she's had her his, her uterus removed, but not the ovaries. So mm. she had ovaries for a couple years after that. And that tends to happen most frequently with people with endometriosis mm. at that age. Um, because if it was something like fibroids or heavy bleeding, you would just take out the uterus, right. leave the ovaries, and they're fine. But endometriosis is not confined just to the uterus. So if you take out the uterus, leave the ovaries, and you still have problems, to come back significant enough to come back and take out those ovaries, then then you're trying to starve out some sort of hormonally dependent process. So at 37, five years later, she's been without estrogen significantly. Mm. And that has to feel more like 70 rather than mm. 37. So God, for hormones th- are a motherfucker. They're man. essential. They just are. So for somebody like her, uh, it's going to be 
chronic, all right? Um, once you don't have ovaries, then your cardiovascular risk starts to mimic those of a man mm. in his 50s. And so she's going to have to pay attention to other processes as well. Um, so I would replace the estrogen and possibly the testosterone. So you would be a really good candidate for pellets, mm -hmm. hormone pellets. Um, they, you only have to have those replaced two to three times a year. So those are really helpful. Once you find out what your dose is that keeps you happy, then how, you just place those pellets under the skin. How do you, yeah, I was going to say, how, do you, how does it There's work? a cannula we use, and, and we just alternate uh, sides of the glute. So oh, we'll okay. do right butt one, you know, first oh, okay. time, left butt the other. But um, there's a, a cannula. The pellets come from a compounding pharmacy, and then they send them to us. We send them to the patient. And then uh, we stick a cannula in, and then you load the channel of the cannula with the pellets, mm -hmm. and they drop right through the channel into the tissue where you have the cannula. So we just push wow. the cannula like into the fat, drop the pellets in, and then there's a plunger we used to pop them through. Yeah. You take it out. It's a small little incision, and then you've got your hormones replaced for a good four months. How bad is the adjustment for that? Like if somebody were to start, does it like make you gain weight? Does it make you fucking irritable? Well, like, for her, she has no hormones, so yeah. we're replacing. So it's going to so, feel good to her. Her absolutely. body's just going to be like, hello. So the weight gain tends to start when your hormones are dropping or when you don't oh. have enough. So perimenopausal weight, menopausal weight, the fat distribution is different. Mm -hmm. um, PCOS type uh, weight, the distribution is different. It tends to be in the front and in the, in the center. So balancing those hormones has a lot to do with how you how you metabolize things and wow. and how you store your fat. But somebody at 37 that's really young, she's going to miss out on like that wonderful sex drive that yeah. you're having oh, if she doesn't horny. replace it, yeah. right? So she deserves it. You go get some yeah. testosterone, you get some estrogen, and titrate it up until you feel good. Um, and then once you feel good, the uh, compounding pharmacist can take whatever, however you're dosed, whether it's um, by pill or by patch. So they can, we can look at what doses you're on and send that to a compounding pharmacist that can make the conversion into a pellet. Mm. And then they'll send, again, the pellets either to us or to the patient. And you can just place them and feel so much better. Doc Dr. Poe does a lot of those. Doc Felix is just out here doing the Lord's work. I don't know. Really I feel are. like I no, feel really like it's are. more. You're like a it's pussy a prophet. <laughs> I'll take that <laughs> <laughs> for real. Like you are the prophet of the pussies. Like you fucking are just out here making bitches feel better about themselves. I try helping I try. get their mental health back because you, when you don't feel good about yourself, your mental health is in you know shambles. Yeah, you're helping people get their sex drives back. That's bringing joy to their lives. You know, like you're really just out it here doing people thug process. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nice having that combination or that mix in one place yeah. so that you know if, if i have people call all the time they'll call and they'll say well i want an o shot but the next question is why do you think you need an o shot mm -hmm. and that's that's important because you yeah. don't want to go spending money on something that you don't need most doctors wouldn't even ask that they'd be like cool we'll take your money yeah i know mm -hmm. my receptionist gets real frustrated she's like, <laughs> when when can you see them when can you talk to them they call for an O shot, and I'm like, but Beth, maybe they don't need an O shot. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, but that's so right, good bitch, because win. most doctors, <laughs> most doctors don't have a heart like that, you know. <laughs> so right, that's really cool. I well, feel like I used my vagina enough to know, mm. to know, you know, yeah. like how important that is. That gave me power. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, for it sure. Gave me joy. Like, pussy is power. That's what I've. I preach. Mm -hmm. That's what my whole fucking brand is about, dude. Like literally, like pussy is, is and power. I'm, I'm here to take care of it. For Holler. You. <laughs> well, if you want a pretty puss, you got to head down to the service station. Pretty Why don't and you? Functional. Pretty and functional. Yes, we don't want right. to just aesthetically pretty. We want it. We want that internally. Bitch to <laughs> we want that bitch to yes. purr like a kitten. Like a kitten. F kitty. Tell people where they can find you online and all that jazz. All right. So the website is Sharice felixmd.com um we have an instagram the service station by felix we have a facebook service station by felix um so uh, that's yeah. that's it i hate to tell people to use the phone because legitimately like we have phone problems it feels like all the time yeah so i just rather people just reach out and they know how just to do emails and yeah, shit yeah. like that yeah make it easier yeah we're getting a new service but the phones are always like the bane of my existence i can't yeah. stand those things I'm, i'd rather I hate talking on out. the phone too <laughs> i'd rather text people will yeah. call me and you just have to text me like talk you know i'll only call mimi and that's if i'm like really excited about something <laughs> Well, Literally. I called her. I was like, uh, where am I? <laughs> yeah. She'll wake up to a text thread like this of me having just <laughs> wild ideas through the night or something to do. 
too. So that's me too. <laughs> Doc, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast. Thank we, you. We're not going to wait two years to get you back on though. I no, think no, we no. need to have you come back just regularly every six months, but also you guys are going to come with me to the service station and watch me get my gobbler fixed. And I'm going to start getting a whole bunch of shit done to my face. So yes. I don't care in the comments. You guys can say don't do it, but I'm going to do it. So, um, well, most of the things that we do are regenerative rather than like masking. So right. We're going to help you. We're going to help your skin be healthier than yeah. it ever has. You know, my, my skin has consistently gotten better over the past few years since I started mm -hmm. paying attention to PCA skin and my estheticians. Yeah. But it's just amazing yeah. what can happen when, you know, when you're empowered with education so you can make your choices yeah. and figure out like, how how do I how far do I want to take this? Do I want to handle it at home myself? Do I want no. something moderate? Mm -mm. Do I want something you know? I'm ready. All I right. do all the skincare at home, but I think just because I'm Brazilian, I naturally have like dark pigment just everywhere, mm -hmm. and it's driving me fucking crazy. So I'm ready to come in and let the big dogs do some work. Yes, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in to another episode of Dumb Blonde. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.